I gotta be honest, I don't know why anybody would buy this if they weren't gonna do this to it. Hello and welcome back to another Gunpla review. Today we're taking a look at the HUC G Armor. And starting off, as always, with the articulation. I have already taken a look at this kit technically in the Novel 2-pack, but this has a couple different parts and a little bit more articulation, so we'll go over it quickly. Head is on a ball joint. There is technically a uh, hinge at the bottom, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually get anything, so... A little bit up and down, can get a full rotation. The only usable piece of new articulation is that the shoulders actually do have a frontwards hinge now, which is nice, and of course fully rotate, and hinge 90 degrees out to the side, it is a bicep rotation. 90 degree elbow, well, very 85 degree <laughs> elbow, and the hands, as always, are on a ball joint. Nothing in the chest, but the waist is on a rotation, so. <laughs> Yeah, not much of one. Front skirts can be separated. Side skirts are on hinge. Back skirts solid, as usual. Hips are just ball joints, so you get 45 degrees out and not, not amazing articulation of the hips, but it's fine. 90 degree bend at the knee, and the feet have a front to back hinge in the ankle and a ball joint down here. Armor is separate. And it does have a downwards toe bend, though that is for the transformation. So overall, I mean, for the time, it's fine, but it definitely shows this age now. <laughs> and getting into accessories, let's start off, as always, with the sticker sheet and by extension color correction. You only get stickers for the head, being the uh, eye stickers. Two separate ones, because of the angling on the eyepiece, which is a bit weird. And front and back head cameras. I did use the cameras because I'm lazy, but... <laughs> I say that, but I did fully paint the head. Obviously the eyes with the red, black, yellow, the trim on the face, the black in the vents on the side, the yellow in the head Vulcans, and the yellow down here on the crotch, which doesn't actually have a sticker, weirdly enough. Aside from that, there's a little bit of paint that I just didn't bother with, like the uh, gray on the jointing up here. That should probably be paint instead of gun marker. And these bits here on the top of the foot are supposed to be gray, though mostly covered anyway. Basically, I just went with a more anime color, like I barely did any panel lining aside from up on the face. And eventually I'm probably going to go back and paint the joint pieces white instead of having them gray just to make it fully anime colors. Plus the hands should probably be a little bit more green <laughs> as they are in the anime. But the Gundam itself is fine. The accessories on the other hand, yeah there's, there's a lot of paint missing. And I didn't bother. Uh, painting any of it because I'm not going to be using it. Then getting into accessories, uh, the yellow on the scope needs to be painted, the rest of it's gray. You do get a dedicated trigger finger hand which is a little bit loose. This does also come with the hyper bazooka but honestly it's it's kind of crap and I don't plan on using it so I didn't even bother cutting it out. No hinge on the handle so it's very hard to get it over the shoulder and it's, it's, it's not great, it's skinny and yeah, there's, there's a reason I didn't bother cutting it out. But aside from that, I did paint some gray in the G-Fighter and uh, the visor on the helmet in there. It's just part of the yellow plastic, so it wasn't actually that hard to paint it. I didn't however paint any of these, because uh, I'm not using them. And I'd rather not waste my paint. This piece is obviously the core block, which isn't too bad. You just have to paint a bunch of gray in here. It's going to be a theme that that Gundam is going to be falling over in this review. <laughs> Something considerably worse than that is the Core Fighter, which, um, yeah, I mean, this looks like a dollar store toy, and, I mean, yeah, it's it's a model kit, so, yeah, but that's a lot of white paint to be putting on this. And, of course, you get the, uh, folded core block for the G-Bull, which, yeah, more white, and the cockpit, which is inset in there, I, I just didn't want to bother if, since I wasn't using it. And the final accessories are two shields, both left and right. You do actually get the uh, shorter one of these to actually attach it onto the arm. Again, 
I just didn't bother cutting it out because I'm never going to use it, but it is there. And you do also get this for the uh, G Sky Easy. It's just, you know, lots in here. You want to remove the landing gear, and then that just plugs in where the front one goes. Now, getting in to the transformations, this Gundam is special. Because if you pull it apart, and pull it apart again, you actually get a separate core block, which is more toy accurate than show accurate, but you actually get the upper and lower halves, which can be used for the different transformations. I'll bring this in now. For the lower half, you do want to pull this piece out of the easy piece. And this just plugs in to the waist like that and slap this on. More importantly, pop this open, fold that out, and then unclip this piece. You want to fold down those toes so that this will actually fit in here. Flip that up. Remove this first, I guess, because you got to hinge this up out of the way to open up the slot in here that this slides onto, which is just uh, sort of a weird system. Come on. Hard to do this on camera, so I'm just gonna. Then you should just be able to bring these down in. Do the. Okay, for some reason, this really didn't want to go in properly. It's a G Sky. The one I prefer using is the G Bull, and they actually force you to lift this up to get it around, which is just a weird bit of oversight. <laughs> Tear part. Just flip that up. And you want to pull the arms out slightly. And then this just slots on. In. Like so. Obviously, you want to slap the shields onto both sides. You also want to swap out this hand with the one holding the beam rifle. Now, the important part is sliding this in on its track, which is easier said than done. Ugh, it really doesn't want to move most of the time. This just plugs in there like so. And for all intents and purposes, this is the G-Bolt. Sorry for slapping that other shield on. It's always funny to me that it just keeps the... Uh, beam rifle in his hand, honestly, I think it looks better without it. But this is what they want, so... <laughs> I, I can kind of... After having to transform these, I kind of understand why Tomino doesn't like them, but... Yeah, this is apparently a tank. <laughs> the G-Sky fares better, at least. This kind of actually looks like something that could maybe fly. <laughs> but of course, this wouldn't be complete without building the G-Armor itself. So, uh, these out of the way, pull the core block out, put the main core back in, rotate this back around by, again, lifting it up for some reason. <laughs> they thought that was a good design decision. You want to bring this back down, fold that in, get this piece out, and pull this back out again, which is... Well, it feels like something's gonna break, but it's, e it's, it's ABS, so it's probably fine. And, uh, put these around the other way. These don't like sitting particularly flush, so they <laughs> sometimes just go pack past these little stops there. Put this down, just look it together. And then this just plugs in there to hold the whole thing together. <laughs> and yeah, this is the complete G-Armor, which is just a complete monstrosity <laughs> of 70s toy engineering. I, 
kind of love it, but at the same time, man, it does not want to... You can see how much of a droop this thing has. <laughs> it's barely holding on there. Uh, thankfully, you can't actually attach this up onto the stand, which... Oh, that looks... Yeah, that's... that is... ugly. <laughs> I, I say that endearingly, I do love how stupid this is. Unfortunately, you can't have this thing kneeling on top of the G-Fighter, because it's just not articulated enough for that, but if you get the revive, you can. You could probably do it with the entry grade, too, thinking about it. But of course, there is one final mode, and it's the one that I'll be keeping it in. But yeah, I probably should have mentioned earlier, these are actually articulated slightly. Pull it in half again. You always have to pull it in half to get this up far enough to pull this stuff out, which is just a weird design decision, to be honest. Plug it back in. Come on. You want to take the legs, rotate them around this way, so that they're facing out. Get them around this, so that it's uh, sort of sitting just on top of it. And you want to cram the legs in to the best of your ability, so that you can Pulls this up around them. Flip these back up around. See, if they were making this today, they wouldn't have this gap here. They would have that tab in or something. And then use those new shoulder joints that they added to bring the arms forward. <laughs> that it can actually two hand the beam rifle decently enough. A setting so I can actually sort of look forward a bit. <laughs> and you have the dumbest thing in the original show. <laughs> I'll be honest, I, I spent 50 Canadian just to have this on my shelf. This This is absurdly stupid and I love it dearly. I did get a funky little extra tank. It doesn't sit flush because of these pieces, but you can kind of use this as its own little separate tank, which is what I'm going to be doing, because I still want this on my shelf because this is this is weird enough on its own, frankly, but it, this is so stupid. I love it. Now, there is one final thing before we get to size comparisons, and that's that this, this thing has a lot of leftover parts. You get the original feet, which is pretty much wholesale there. Don't get the original torso. This was specifically designed to be able to have this. Get a bunch of leftover polycaps. Get the original backpack, which the uh, beam savers just sat in. The new ones actually peg on, and I mean that's so that they have the ability to hinge inward to fit, but it means they don't fall off all the time, which is nice. And yeah, you do get the uh, Zuka, which isn't leftovers, I just didn't bother cutting it out, like I said, because it, it, you can kind of tell from the way this is put together, it's kind of crap. I didn't mention it, but yeah, you do get the beam savers that the original came with, too. They're the old ones that are molded on the runner, but they're fine. And as for a quick size comparison, I mean, the Gundam itself isn't that big, but yeah, the, the G-Armor is, <laughs> well, G-Fighter. When, when it's combined into the G-Armor, it's even bigger. So to wrap this review up, Probably got a little messy during the transformation just because it's not the most straightforward thing in the world. And hopefully it wasn't too far off camera. <laughs> this kit does show its age a bit, but um, honestly that's mostly from the Gundam and not the G-Fighter parts. If the Revive wasn't so much skinnier than this one, I'd, I'd honestly recommend just picking that up to throw in this. Thinking about it, the entry grade would probably be a good replacement. Granted, it doesn't have the forward hinges in the shoulder, and you'd have to swap out the hands and the beam rifle from this for it, but I mean, that still gets the point across. This is actually a pretty solid kit being held back by the main suit in it. I'm just not a huge fan of the old uh, RX-78 gym mold. The RX-78's a little bit better than the gym, but they're both still kind of crusty. But this does everything you want, as long as you don't mind painting. I will probably eventually get around to painting that core fighter, just to display on its own, frankly. But the kit's fine. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. Subscribe and hit the bell to be alerted for future reviews. 
Come chill in the Discord. Follow me on Twitter, if that's even still around. And consider supporting me on Patreon, so I can keep bringing you videos like this. And, as always, until next time, happy building.